I'm happy to be joined today by Dr. Michael Kerner, who is a professor of organic chemistry at the University of Arizona. Thanks for joining me, Michael. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, out of 2,500 uh, faculty members, teachers here at the U of A, you are ranked in the top five via evaluations from uh, other faculty, student members, and administration. Now, why are you so successful, and what do you do that's different than other professors? I think that what they're seeing is that they're going to expect me not to ever take from my students. I think it's a number one issue, uh, number one attribute for a, for a good teacher. I want to be an advocate for my students. I think if you ask, ask any of my students, they would say, well, look, Dr. K is going to try to get us a higher grade, try to get us to learn this material. I'm never trying to take things from them. I'm never going to be adversarially saying, here's a question on the test that you've never seen before, for example. If I want to test them on something, they've seen me do it. I used to be an undergraduate here. I used to be an uh, undergraduate in this department way back when, in this building, in the chemistry building. I actually take, take the chemistry classes that they're taking in the same classroom that they're taking them in. And I thought to myself way back when, dang, if I ever teach this class, I'm not ever going to do this, this, and this. Oh, crap. I'm teaching this class now, so I've got to fulfill my, my promise to myself that, okay, I'm not going to lecture on this stuff and then the book talks about that stuff, and then go test them on that stuff. It just didn't seem a lot, didn't seem fair. And number two, I think it's just a, you have to have a predisposition of being a helpful person, a person of service, either genetically predisposed or else learn that behavior yourself that, look, that you want to do this. Otherwise, it could be a grind. If you don't like, if you don't like it, if you don't get the rewards out of it, yeah. uh, interacting with students could be, could be harsh. Now, with organic chemistry, you're going to have a percentage of people every semester that no matter what you can do uh, will fail. Now, but you take every step necessary to try to pull those kids from in between the cracks and get them back up on their feet and help them to succeed. How much do you give and take from the successes and failures of your students into how you feel about yourself? Yeah, it's kind of sick. It's a sad commentary on who I am. Um, um, I tell this to my students during the exams. I have to take on a different role. I, I have to like not I have to stop teaching them during the exam. I have to stop teaching them. And I'm walking around, wa looking at what the answers are putting down, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, dude, don't do that. Ah, I, I can't. I can't. Like, oh, no, ah. uh, I want to inside, deep inside. Uh, I want them to succeed, and it's like if they fail, and it's sick of me because if they fail, I feel like I failed. Oh my gosh. Uh, Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's their grade, but if they do poorly, I think I did poorly. The other side of the coin is when they get an A+, plus, when they get 100% on their exams, I think, you know, I'm patting myself. Yeah, yeah I, I did that. Like, oh, yeah, that's their grade. They, they're the one that studied 20 hours to get that grade. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways, but, uh, yeah, if they do poorly, I take it personally. I take it personally, you know. I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fundamental personal failure on my part, which is a sad commentary on my personality, but that's just who I am. If they fail, I feel like I fail. Now, in your classes, uh, a lot of students come away and uh, what they'll say about your classes invariably is that they really enjoy your classes because you're able to keep students engaged. You're able to do some fun things here and there, you know, uh, sing or dance like Beyonce. I'm so uh, embarrassed, Brett, I'm so, yeah, okay. I know where you're going. <laughs> you know, uh, do Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes. Now, how do you keep uh, the class so efficiently run and cover all the material you need to while keeping the students engaged and making it fun for students. Uh, that's the key thing. I mean, uh, I've been in classes that are, that are dead. In the psychological sense, they're, they're, they're kind of a dead class. The information flow is too slow or too fast. Uh, the information doesn't, isn't presented as relevant to their life or their study, the course of their study. It's in all intents, it's a, kind of a dead class. It's kind of sad. I mean, you, you, you've been in some, right? I've been through plenty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. You know, your professors are exactly this. They just are an uh, extension of, uh, of any student. They're, they've gone in and chosen academic profession, and, and they know better. They, they've been in dead classes. Uh, it, but it comes from the root of, like, everybody learns differently. If I draw, if I draw a structure on the board, yeah, half, two-thirds of the students, like, got it, okay, no problem. I want to like talk it to death. I call it talk it to death. You know, I want to talk about now this atom. This atom is so sad. You know, that's why it's sad. Why is it sad? Well, it has this bend in it, and it has this kind of electron deficiency, and and make fun of it. And if they don't learn there, okay, 
then start using YouTube, start using clips from movies, um, bring my preceptors up in front and we start doing kabuki orbital theater or something to get them to, to digest this in a different format because everyone learns differently and um, they'll never forget you know, dancing to Beyonce videos. And it, it's all relevant to the course material. Um, but yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. And, I, and I've warned all my students uh, to, that I would disavow any <laughs> acknowledgement of them um, knowing that I had danced to a Beyonce video. So uh, I'm kind of shocked. Someone let the, let the cat out of the bag. Someone told you. So. What about a favorite band? Oh, I listen to everything. My iPod has like 14,000 songs in it. Wow. I mean, it's like, a, yeah, I'm old. I got a lot. I got stuff from the 70s, 80s. I, I you know, uh, I got T-Pain. I got <laughs> Usher. I got, I, I, I got it all. Um, of course, you know, my students would, would be, would think that I was lying unless I said I didn't like to say Beyonce. All right. But I got Lady Gaga. I got all that. I got crap. I got stuff. Um, I don't, nothing favorite, it's just like I like it all. I guess the Beatles, I guess it's a perennial, everyone likes the Beatles, but I like John Lennon, old John Lennon stuff. Now, being in uh, your classes and seeing you teach, it's, it's pretty obvious what a, a fantastic passion you have for the students and an advocate for the students. Is this really where your heart is, teaching organic chemistry? Yeah, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I have. 1,100 students a year, and 90% are pre-health, pre-med, pre-vet, pre-pharmacy. Uh, there's a common goal about every student I see, and uh, they're, they're in some allied health field that they want to go into. So yeah, I want to help them do that. I want to give them every opportunity to do that. You, you want to be pre-med? Okay, let me, let's, let's, let's work on this. Let's, let's get you to that level. Um, it, it, I use it, sorry, but it's kind of like, kind of a little, Jedi mind trick, it's kind of manipulative, like you want to be at that level, you, to do that you got to function in organic chemistry at this level, you got to function in biology at this level, physics at this level, gen chem at this level, verbal oral skills at this level, and it's a good motivator, it's a way to force students to, number one, he's doing them a service, like you need to be operating at a higher level than you think you need to be, it's a good motivator, it's a coach, it's a, it's a trainer basically. So yeah, it's, uh, I like being around very smart, bright, motivated, you know, future medical professionals. So it's a win-win. I get to see the best of the best. Absolutely. And they get the best out of me, so I think it works out. All right, well, it's been a pleasure. Thank Brett? Thank you very much. Dr. Yeah, Turner. absolutely, absolutely. All right.